Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. Definitely appreciate you all taking time out of your day to pay me a visit. Uh, I'm going to be painting up some Whopper Plopper 75s tonight. And uh, what I'm going to be painting is a pattern that I found just looking at different um, Zerispook ideas. Uh, normally when I'm looking for inspiration, I don't really have a very good like creative mind to just kind of whip up my own patterns. So I, I get a lot of inspiration from other patterns. Um, and sometimes I just try to copy them. Um, and this is one of those times where I, I tried copying uh, one of the heat on patterns. Um, I didn't quite get it, but I actually I prefer the, the one that I got. So this is uh, a spectrum pattern that I found through Google for uh, heat on Zerispook. This is what we're going to be aiming for. I painted this on a Super Spook Junior over the weekend. So it's just got a purple top, a yellow under uh, underbelly, got some red accents on the bottom, and then it's got some trout spots on it. It's a very simple pattern. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. Uh, we're just going to do it on a Whopper Plopper 75. I think it's going to translate pretty nice. I really like how these Zara Spooks turned out. I think it'll turn out pretty good on a, uh, a Whopper Plopper as well. So, like in most of my uh, my videos, I am going to edit out uh, some parts of the video that are repetitious. So, um, really the main one is after every single color uh, that I do, I'll do a heat set. I just use a, uh, a cheap Harbor Freight heat gun. Just quickly do it over the lures so that it dries the uh, the paint so that you can move on to the next color. So I'll edit that out. Um, and that's that's about it. I'll, uh, I'll show you guys everything else. So um, first step that we're gonna do is put a white base coat on that. And for that I use a uh, Cretex Wicked Opaque White. Um, I think that works out fairly well. Um, I guess the, the other thing to kind of note about some of the stuff that I'm gonna be editing, you'll see that I've got four Whopper Ploppers. I'm normally painting at least four of the same lures at once. Um, sometimes I'll even go all the way up to eight if it's a pattern that I use a lot. Um, so I'm going to only kind of show you one of them. I don't plan on doing any variations of this, but once I actually start getting into this, there are uh, some times where I'll, uh, I'll get inspired to change up a color or add a little bit of a variation. So I might very well do that, and I'll, uh, I'll point that out if I do. So, But there's no variation in the book white base coat so we're just gonna go lather that on real quick I'm still getting used to this uh, iPhone mount that I'm using so I'm gonna try my best to, to not block the uh, the footage at all but I'm gonna apologize now if there's any point in this video where uh, my hand and air gun is uh, getting being uh, a block When it comes to these Whopper Plopper 75s, um, I don't really care too much about the uh, plopper section, <laughs> I guess, because I don't clear coat that, because this is, it's rubber, it's flexible, you don't want to clear coat that. Uh, if you do, it will mess up the action. I made that mistake uh, when I first started painting these lures. 
I will clear coat the actual hard section of it. Um, I this I paint it all just because it's it's there and I do it, but it's it's not really that important. All right, so we got our four uh, clear or bleh, not clear coated, but we got our white base coat. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention that I'm going to be cutting out of these videos is me cleaning my airbrush in between colors. Um, I'll uh, try to remember to link the video for my process to do that. Um, you guys can go watch that if you uh, feel so inclined. So the next color we're going to be using is a, another Cretex Wicked color. This is a Wicked Golden Yellow. Now, uh, if you've been watching my videos a while, you notice that I really don't thin most of my paints. Um, I try to stick to paints that just spray right out of the bottle. I really don't like thinning stuff. It's a hassle. Um, but this Wicked Golden Yellow is one of those colors that comes out like Elmer's glue. And uh, you definitely need to thin if you want it to spray right. Part of the other or reason I really don't like thinning stuff is I feel it results in a lot more waste. You're either making too much or not enough, and you have to have a second batch. I hate being wasteful. Pretty cheap as well, so when I'm mixing colors, um, I'm using these condiment cups. I bought like a 500 of these condiment cups like three years ago. And uh, it was only like seven or eight bucks on Amazon. And I, I'm i only halfway through the, the pack right now. The general rule of thumb uh, with thinning your paint is you want it to be like skim milk. Um, luckily I grew up drinking skim milk. I don't think a lot of people use skim milk, but uh, you just kind of want it to be runny and pretty well mixed. I think that's good enough. All right. And then uh, for this, we're just going to do kind of like the upper three, three quarters. You don't have to do the top, top section. That looks like we got a little bit of splatter right there, unfortunately, but that's all right. Alrighty, uh, so for the top half of the lure, we're going to be using a Wicked Detail Violet. Uh, this is another Cretex color. Um, this is an odd thing because in the summer, when it's hotter, and I think a little more humid in my... Uh, in my painting booth. This will shoot straight out of the, uh, the bottle, but in these winter months, it's a little bit more coagulated, so I do thin this one, uh, just like the Wicked Golden Yellow. So I'm just going to kind of go over the, the top half of this.
Well, we made a mess of that one. I filled the cup up a little bit too much, but you know what? I actually, I think I might like that. It's got a little bit of splatter on it. That's all right. Whenever I'm spraying violet, I really like going dark on it. One thing I want to point out to you guys real quick, I don't know how well this shows up in the camera, but you can see that the sides are a little bit darker than the top. Part of why I like doing that and the way that you actually get this done, so if you don't like that, uh, that wicked golden yellow, I went up to about there, and then it's got white on top. So that's why it's a little bit um, lighter up there. It's kind of got a color shift to it really easy way of doing that um re really like that this being a top water i really don't know that that's going to do anything but you know half the fun of doing this is pleasing yourself so i'm gonna say i like doing that this one needs to get a little bit more equal so again to just kind of show that so that's the purple that's going on right now and then as you're spraying the white section, it, you can tell that it's getting lighter. Okay, next up we've uh, got the red underbelly accents that we need to do. It's going to be Cretex Wicked Crimson that we're going to be using for that. And uh, you might be noticing that I didn't do purple on the top of the tails. And I think what I decided I am going to do is just make that entire tail red. Just to kind of simplify it. Alright, we'll do this one first. So, just going to give this of a bright red underbelly right up there. Bring it a little bit up on both sides. Just like that. And we'll just make the tail red. Just like that. Nice and simple. Okay, well, we got the red done. I'm not going to say I'm a, a person that pays attention to a lot of details. I will admit I forgot to do red on this one for the tail. But you know what? I kind of like the purple. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But uh, we got red everywhere else that we needed it. So the last thing we're gonna do is add some uh, add some trout spots. So um, for the trout spots, I've got a uh, universal uh, stencil. This is something that I got from Lure Parts Online. This is part number 3203-01. Just universal lure decorating stencils, trout spots. And uh, it's just a big old stencil. And uh, for the trout spot color, we're going to just be using a transparent black. Um, I generally prefer transparent black uh, on almost all of the, uh, the applications I'm using black. Um, it just, it's a lot more forgiving and I think it blends in, doesn't overpower uh, the rest of the color scheme. Alright, so for this fad of a lure, I'm going to kind of go down. So I want them... Um, in the purple area so I'm gonna just kind of line it up just by eyeballing it and just kind of line it up like that and then just shoot it on down 
Just like that. And then we got our little black speckles, freckles, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so uh, now that we got the colors all done, um, next step is to add some eyeballs. And uh, these Whopper Ploppers take 5 sixteenths. And uh, I'm going to use red. I think red really goes well. I would normally wouldn't think that red would go well with violet and, you know, red cheek, but it, it really does go well. So uh, that's what we're going to do. All right, so the first thing that I do when I'm putting eyeballs on, zoom in for you, see if you can't get a little bit of a better view for you. So while the eyes have some adhesive backing to them, it doesn't work all that well. So I always use some uh, gel Gorilla Glue and um, just put a little dab the eye socket so uh, what I do to put eyeballs on is what I call the, the toothpick trick so I take a toothpick and uh, get a clean one and just get the tip right underneath the eyeball and just lay it just like that and then I do take a different toothpick I'll lay it in the eye socket and then I'll use the other toothpick to just kind of hold it in place and then you kind of want to roll this other toothpick that the eyeball's on to kind of get it off of it and then you can just kind of plop it right in there and perfect it's right there and then um, I'll take the toothpick that had the eyeball on it and just wipe it off on a rag because you do get some super glue on that toothpick and um, you don't want that super glue getting on the, the top side of this eyeball or else it's going to make it look like crap. So wiping off that uh, super glue really does help. off to the side let those dry for a little bit go on to the other one all right so we got the eyeballs on all these um, I'm gonna let those dry for a while and actually I think I'm gonna be done for the night um, I've only got four of these done ready for uh, clear coat um, for clear coats I use KBS um, I'll be honest I haven't used KBS on a, a, a jointed spinning lure like this yet so I've got an idea how I'm gonna do it um, whether that's gonna be successful or not I don't know so I'm not gonna show you guys that just uh, because I don't anticipate it going well necessarily um, hopefully it does uh, there's a lot of room on these but um, I'll show you guys or at least I'll explain how I did it uh, at the end of this once I'm done with them um, if it turned out well. Otherwise, I'll tell you what not to do when clear coating with KBS. Um, otherwise, I have done these Whopper Plopper 75s in uh, just normal two-ton Devcon 30-minute epoxy. I'll do the front half, uh, wrap some rubber bands in there, uh, in between the, uh, the body and the, uh, the spinner, and uh, let that dry for 24 hours on a uh, drying rack. And then I'll take uh, take it off the drying rack, paint the, the back half, uh, not doing the plastic or the rubber um, prop part of it. And then that works. And then I'll just take the rubber bands out because that rubber band spaces it so that they don't glue together in case that epoxy kind of runs over. And any epoxy that does run over, I'll just take an X-Acto knife and kind of 
pry it out or clean it up. I think my approach with uh, KBS is probably going to be pretty similar, but we'll, we'll see how that goes later on this week. i got to paint some more Lugas before I crack open my KBS. All right, guys, it's been about three weeks. Uh, haven't really been in the uh, painting mood, but uh, I finally did get around to clear coating these, um, and it worked out pretty well. Um, so what I did, and what I typically do with these whopper ploppers, is uh, tie some elastic rubber bands around the tail, and um, that spaces that out. So what I did with uh, the KBS is I dipped this front half uh, I did two coats on the front half of the lure, and then um, for the tail section, I just hand-painted that. Again, not doing the um, the rubber prop part of it, and uh, these turned out really well. I really like these. Can't wait to get uh, some hooks on these. They're still drying. But uh, I'm editing the video right now, and they're, they've dried enough where I'm able to handle them. So, um, yeah, worked out well. I did take off the rubber band on this one, and it spins nice and nice and clear. So, all right. Um, if anyone's curious, for these Whopper Plopper 75s, I'm typically throwing on size 4 hooks with them, which... You can actually see right here, uh, KVD size four hooks, typically. Um, all right, well, thanks uh, for sticking with me. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I will see you all next time.